Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we are, we are uh, getting into the third week of great experiments in psychology and uh, this week we shall focus on clinical and health psychology. So there are as I have told you earlier there are just too many important uh, experiments and case studies that have happened in psychology over the century and uh, beyond. But uh, it is really tough for me to select the cases and especially the case studies in clinical and health psychology. Uh, so, I have just selected some of them focusing on different aspects of clinical and health psychology. And today's, in today's lecture, we are going to focus on conditioned emotional reactions. This is uh, the major study that was done by Watson and Reiner, J. B. Watson being the father of experimental uh, behavioral psychology and this was published in 1920 in the Journal of Experimental Psychology. Now, um, Many of you have already heard of J. B. Watson and he is uh, known for his work on behaviorism and he had written the behavioral manifesto and he is uh, known to be the American founder of behaviorism in 1913. And according to Watson, uh, he believed that uh, behavior was should be the ultimate discipline uh, matter a subject matter of the for the discipline of psychology and behavior so what is behavior behavior is overt observable and measurable aspects of human activity so this was in direct contrast to what wilhelm wundt in germany was trying to study so he wound uh, we have seen earlier that Wundt's uh, major uh, scope of psychology was uh, focused on conscious human mind through introspection, but uh, J. B. Watson was a very verbal critic of uh, Wundt's, uh, Wundt's theory, especially introspection. And he believed that this was uh, introspection was basically against the principles of science. One of the reasons being that uh, he spell, he felt Watson felt that introspection was futile, since only the, the that very individual who is introspecting has access to that uh, info information that he receives through introspection. So the individual only has an access to his or her mind, and nobody else can check the accuracy of introspection unless the individual himself reveals or himself herself reveals what he was undergoing and this is private. So, behavior on the other hand is public. So, according to Watson that if we are talking about science then it should be uh, expressed and it should be studied by others as well. So, it cannot be limited to an individual. So, um, it should be access, accessible to other observers and this being the basic requirement of science introspection did not meet the basic tenet of being a part of a scientific discipline. And as we have uh, spoken about earlier psychology had emerged into a scientific discipline. So, according to uh, J. B. Watson introspection had no role to play in psychology as a science. So, he focused on behavior and Watson felt that behavior must be analyzed and this is where he focused on uh, for an analyzing behavior he focused on conditioned uh, reflex or conditioned responses. And he felt that all behavior can be broken down into a number of conditioned responses. However complex may it appear, it is always composed of these simple units, all of which in turn are based on three inborn human emotions. So, he spoke of the three major uh, emotions being rage, fear and love. And this uh, actually when we are talking about the theory of condition reflex, this was given by Ivan Pavlov. He was a Russian physiolo physiologist in 1904 and Watson was really 
influenced by this theory, impressed and influenced by this theory. And he was the first psychologist to apply this process of classical conditioning or respondent or Pavlovian conditioning as it is called to human behavior. And he did this through experimentation on a, on a 11 year or 11 month old child named little Albert. So, basically his name was Albert B and as we get through uh, Watson's cases and uh, reports on uh, Albert, he has been mentioned as little Albert. Now, um, when we are talking, I need to tell you a little about Ivan Pavlov and his experiments. Most of you may be familiar about it, with it uh, in your classes, uh, in your classroom study of learning, uh, maybe in your uh, school days. But I will just for a little debriefing, let us um, uh, talk about what Pavlov was saying. So, Pavlov was actually working on the salivation responses of uh, dogs and there he chanced upon this uh, behavior pattern of dogs and he saw that uh, if, uh, if the stimulus um, when, uh, when the dog was hungry, he would uh, the response responsing behavior would be salivation. But if there was the sound of a bell which was uh, produced uh, when the dog was hungry, then gradually that sound of the bell would be paired with that hunger and then it would also produce salivation. And with time, if the only the sound of the bell, so basically when the dog is hungry, the food is given and that brings in salivation. So, when the food and a hungry dog, when the food is produced uh, with the sound of a bell, that brings in salivation. So, gradually with a couple of pairings with the food and the um, bell, it was seen that the dog would salivate only at the sound of the bell. So, now if we just put um, Pavlov's theory in presentation, we see that the unconditioned stimulus produces an unconditioned response. So, here for a hungry dog, it is the food and this produces the salivation. Now, the unconditioned stimulus plus the new stimulus or the novel stimulus in this case. So, here is the food that is the unconditioned stimulus. Why unconditioned? Because by itself the food can produce salivation for a hungry dog. So, food plus the sound of the bell that is a new stimulus was producing the conditioned response. So, here also initially you get the salivation. So, after a couple of pairings, so after subsequent joint presentations, it was seen that only the bell, so which is the condition stimulus is producing the conditioned response that is salivation. So, only the bell is being able to produce the salivation. So, what has happened? The bell and the food have been paired together and that is why the attribute of the food to be able to produce salivation has transferred to the bell and now the bell can actually produce salivation. Now, this was Pavlov's experiment. Now, Watson tried to show that it is the same way that human beings also learn. And uh, as I mentioned just before that he tried this uh, classical conditioning uh, with a human behavior. So, basically he tried to see it through a child, whether the child was also learning to a condition, uh, to learning something through conditioned behavior. So, here he chose little Albert and he, what he tried to condition was he uh, tried to see whether fear, which is an emotion could be conditioned. So, there were uh, four primary questions that he was asking in himself during the study. Number one is, could they condition fear of an animal that is a white rat by visually presenting it and simultaneously striking a steel bar? If such a conditioned emotional response could be established, would this transfer to other animals or other objects? So, basically could the conditioning of fear be transferred 
to other animals as well. So, could actually uh, fear be induced in a white uh, in an in a child, uh, the fear of a rat be introduced induced in a child and after that could that fear of the rat be transferred to other objects or animals. And what is the effect of time on such conditioned emotional responses. So, that means that how long is that conditioning going to learn uh, last. So, how long is that learning going to last and if after a reasonable period such conditioned emotional responses have not died down what laboratory methods could be devised to remove them. So, you see the final question is also trying to answer that if anybody has an emotional response of fear and we assume that fear has been learnt, then what are the ways of actually removing that fear. So, uh, now getting to the experimental design as I mentioned that this experiment was conducted on only one subject and the subject was a 11th month 11 month old child named Albert B. His mother uh, how he came happened to be a subject was uh, he his mother uh, was a wet nurse in the hospital where Watson and Reiner worked. And Albert, talking about Albert's personality, Albert was a very strong, healthy uh, child, and especially uh, he's reported as being phlegmatic. That is, he was uh, not easily upset by anything. He was a calm child, and which made him especially suitable for this experiment. This study. Uh, also represents a diary study. Now, what is a diary study? It is a detailed record of the behavior of the child over a period of approximately 6 weeks, not of course, daily, but uh, it was uh, followed whenever uh, the experimentation was done, all the records were uh, kept on hold. So, um, unlike the diary studies of Darwin and Piaget, the focus was on the very specific behavior. So, basically about the induced fear and namely little Albert's fear response to particular animals and objects. So, as I mentioned that it was not a diary study of everyday affairs of uh, little Albert's life, but it was primarily related to his uh, reactions to specific animals and objects that were related to that was related to the induced fear. So, uh, let us see how Albert was as an individual. So, little Albert who was 9 months of age then uh, what uh, he whenever he was confronted he was actually confronted with a white rat a rabbit a dog a monkey masks with and without hair cotton wool and burning newspapers so uh, it was seen that uh, albert showed no response of fear at all to any of these stimuli and his mother and other hospital staff also confirmed that albert was hardly frightened by anything and he hardly ever cried. So, that made him more suitable for the experiment. So, what did uh, Watson and Reiner do to induce fear in Albert? So, while Reiner uh, got little Albert to fixate her moving hand, so she kept moving her hand and uh, he was supposed to Albert was made to hold it and keep it still. Watson came behind the child and suddenly struck a hammer on a suspended steel bar. So, what is he doing? He is creating a loud sound and this startled Albert violently. Mind you, he is a 9 month old child okay. and when the hammer was struck a second time, his lips began to pucker and tremble and after the third blow, he started to cry. This sound stimulus provided Watson and Reiner with the means of trying to answer the four questions. So, what were they trying to do? So, they were trying to induce the fear of the loud sound to other animals and objects. Now, it is we already know that the things uh, Albert is not afraid of and as if I just go back to the list, there are so many things that uh, Albert, little Albert is not afraid of. So, there are, uh, so first they found out what he was actually afraid of. So, we saw that he was, Albert was afraid of the loud sound. Now, uh, the next, so inducing fear to induce fear, the experiment started when Albert was 11th months old and basically precisely 11th months and 3 days old. 
and on this time uh, on that day he was tested again on these same stimuli and see if he was actually afraid of any of these stimuli. So, all that we have all the animals and things that we have mentioned before objects that we have mentioned before and it was seen that little Albert was only afraid of the loud sound produced by the hammer on the steel bar. And throughout this period, mind you, Albert was uh, quietened down or soothed by his building blocks, which were given to him to quieten him and to test his general emotional state. They were always removed from sight whenever the experiment began. Okay, so, that was his way of calming down. So, when he was given the building blocks, as you will see, he would calm down gradually. So, now what were they doing? It was so the results show that a conditioned they were trying to establish a conditioned emotional response to a white rat. So, first thing was done with a white rat. So, uh, the conditioned emotional response of fear. So, what are they trying to do? So, let us just do this um, uh, graphical representation again. So, in this case, the unconditioned stimulus that will produce an unconditioned response. So, it is what produces? So, it is the loud sound. The loud sound naturally, so it need not be learned. So, if you just substitute the word conditioning with learning, you will see that it is unlearned stimulus that produces an unlearned response. So, the loud sound produces the response of fear in Albert. So, in little Albert. So, then the loud sound was paired with a white rat and this produced fear. So, now initially the fear is being produced by the sound, but not by the rat. Okay, as we will know that he preferred rats after he preferred all sorts of animals, he was not really afraid of anything. After successive pre presentations, so after successive presentations, Watson and Reiner wished to see what would happen and they actually saw that the white rat also induced created fear. So, let us see how they did that. Okay. So, first uh, on 11th months or 3 days when the white rat suddenly was, was taken from the basket and given to Albert and he began to reach for it with his left hand. Just as he touched the rat, the bar was struck behind right behind his head. So, basically the loud sound was produced. He jumped violently and fell forward burying his face in the mattress but he did not cry. So, just as his right hand touched the rat, again the bar was struck again and again Albert jumped violently, fell forward and began to whimper. whimper. Now, no tests were carried out for a week. So, this was the first week. So, in the next week, so that is 11th month 10 days. So, again the rat was present sudden, presented suddenly, but without the sound. And already you see how Albert responds. Albert looked at it steadily, but did not try to reach it. So, see just by the two presentations a week before, Albert was cautious and mind you he is only 11 months old, 11 months 10 days. So, he had whatever he had uh, experienced a week before, so that is on 11 month 3 days, he remembers it. And when he was presented with the white rat, he looked at it cautiously steadily, but did not reach for it. But when it was placed near him, he tentatively reached it with his white right hand. And when the rat nosed his left hand, he immediately withdrew it. So, when the rat came forward, he immediately withdrew it. But again, see there is an ambivalence in the response. He started to reach for the rat's head with the forefinger of the left hand, but withdrew it suddenly before contact. So, there is an amount of uh, suspicion or caution that was already building up in the small child. So, after the two joint presentations, 
given the previous it was seen that that presentation uh, was actually having some effect. And when he was presented with his building blocks, he started playing with them immediately. So, three successive joint presentations rat and plus hammer on steel bar failed to produce crying, but when rat was suddenly presented on its own Albert's face puckered, he whimpered and withdrew his body sharply to the left. So, though Albert was not crying as he would to the sound loud sound, but after three presentations, three successive presentations, he was already cautious of the rat and he was trying to avoid the rat. Again, when the joint presentation was made that is the rat and the loud sound, Albert fell over immediately to the right side and began to whimper. And another joint presentation, star, he started violently and cried. When the rat alone was presented, now the sound was removed and only the rat was presented. The moment the rat was presented, Albert started to cry. And almost instantly, he turned sharply to the left, fell over on the side and raised himself on all fours and crawled towards, crawled away almost by reaching the edge of the table. So, basically it was seen that in all seven joint presentations were required to create the conditional emotional response of fear. Now, the next question to answer was whether the what happened to the conditioning over time. So, once a response of fear has been um, induced, then how does it continue over time? So, next it was Albert was uh, presented with the blocks. The next set of experimentation happened in on 11 months, four, 15 days. And when he was presented with the blocks, he played with them as his usual way. When the rat alone was presented, he whimpered, withdrew the right hand, turned his head and trunk away. So, he moved away from it. When the blocks again were presented, he smiled and played with them. Again, when the rat was presented, he leaned over to the left side as far away from the rat as possible, then fell over and hurried away. Again, when the blocks were presented, he played with it. So, for the next, so the previous experiment was carried out on 11 months, 10 days and we see after 5 days that the conditioning effect still carried over and it was still present though probably the intensity had gradually reduced. He, Albert was not crying anymore when he saw the rat alone, but he was still avoiding it and he was running away from it. Now, uh, would the see a conditioned emotional response transfer to other stimuli? Now, the Albert was presented with a rabbit. So, mind you, we know that he was not afraid previously before the experiments began, he was not afraid of any of these animals or objects. Now, when he was presented with the rabbit after uh, 11 months, 15 days and later, he was. it was seen that uh, he leaned far away from it as possible and whimpered and then burst into tears. When it was placed in contact with him, he buried his face in the mattress and got up on all fours, crawled away and crying as he went. So, it had actually been transferred to the fear of the white rat had been transferred to the rabbit. Now, when he was presented with his favorite blocks again, he played with them more energetically than usual. Next, he was presented with a dog and th mind you, there is no paired presentation with the loud sound, but even when it was, when he was presented with the dog alone, he shrank back as it approached and tried to run away, crawl away, but did not cry at first. But as soon as the dog moved out of his vision, he quietened down. So, just the visual effect created quite an impact on him. The dog was then made to approach Albert's head and he straightened up immediately and turned his head away, began to cry. So, the moment he saw the dog, he was again afraid and started to cry. But the moment again when the blocks were presented to him alone, he began to play with it. Now, after that a fur coat was presented and he withdrew immediately from it and began to fret. When it was placed close to his left side, 
he began to crawl away and cry. So, as we see that he was afraid the pairing was done with the white rat, but it transferred to the rabbit, to the dog and also to the fur coat. So, anything that was furry, Albert had generalized it the fear of the rat to all these other furry animals. Now, after 11th month 20 days, so we see this was 11 month 15 days and 11 month 20 days. What happens is, when he is presented with the blocks alone, he played with them as usual. When he was presented with the rat alone, he withdrew from it, but now there is no crying. So, you see as time passed, the intensity also of fear also reduced, but he followed it cautiously with his eyes. The response as I mentioned was much weaker than the previous week and again it was the since it had weakened down Watson and Reiner decided to freshen up the memory and there was another loud bang and immediately the rat alone basically uh, the conditioned emotional response became stronger. So, that is he started avoiding it more, but still there was no crying. And Thereafter, when the rat was presented over alone, he fell over on all fours. When after the freshened up presentation, so means when it was presented jointly after that, he started crawling away from it. The, when the rabbit alone was present, he moved as far away from it. But whenever the blocks were given to him, he began to play with it immediately. So, now you see that he has not been really uh, disturbed. So, he has not generalized little Albert, though he is such a small child, he has not generalized his fear response to everything around him. So, he had not generalized it to the blocks that he were playing with. He had only um, related the fear of the um, uh, loud sound, he had transferred it to the white rat as it was being paired and then transferred it to all the furry animals nearby. So, that is how he was um, probably thinking that uh, these are together. Now, um, thereafter we see that um, all these tests were conducted on a in dark room, small dark room on a table with a mattress. Now, uh, what would happen if the situation was markedly changed? So, would the conditioned emotional response uh, still be present? So, that is whether, whether fear towards these objects would be present in another place. Watson and Weiner wish to check it out and Albert was taken into a large well lit lecture room and he was placed on a table in the middle of the room. He was tested with the rat and alone four times with the rat and hammer, the rabbit alone twice, the dog alone and the blocks alone. The condition response, emotional response still transferred to these other animals. So, when, when they were present in, in a different room, the fear still remained. So, we see that even when the situation is changed, the fear of the objects has not changed. So, it still remained. Now, how persistence was the condition emotional response? We have seen that uh, previously that the intensity would wane away after a week, but it would not completely be gone. Now, uh, it was shown that um, the, the condition response from the previous uh, two weeks that it still remained, but further studies on Albert uh, to see how long it remained was not possible by Watson and Reiner as Albert was removed from the hospital and they uh, was not available for the research any further. So, uh, th this time uh, during this time he was taken to the laboratory weekly. So, thereafter a long time uh, long term longitudinal study following the um, persistence of the fear response could not be done by Watson and Reiner. But later on he presented after uh, a month. So, that is basically he would come after every week and on 12 months 21 days we see that uh, when a Santa Claus mask was produced in front of 
Albert. Mind you, he was never afraid of masks with or without hair. But this time, on when he was 12 months and 21 days, when a Santa Claus mask was produced, he, uh, with, he there was constant immediate withdrawal. There was gurgling, but he slapped it without touching and uh, slapped at it without touching and his hand, when his hand was forced to touch it, he started crying. And this happened on two further occasions. Eventually, he started crying at the sight of the mass. So, you see from furry animals, it has also shifted to a furry object, something that was perceived as a furry object and the mask. So, it had transferred to the mask. Now, with the fur coat, it was seen that he withdrew both his hands, then began to whimper as it the coat was brought nearer. And when it touched him accidentally, he started crying. So, um, when the but when the blocks were presented to him, he played with them as usual. So, now in 12 months, 21 days, we see that when the rat was produced, he allowed it to crawl towards him without withdrawing. He sat very still and fixated at it intently. But gradually, when it was placed on his arm, he withdrew his body and began to fret. But if you just notice that he did not start to cry. And when again with the blocks, he started playing with them. For the rabbit, initially there was no uh, avoidance, but with time when it was placed on his lap, he began to cry. With the dog again, so you see when the uh, Albert kept cautiously looking at it, but did not um, when the dog was motionless, he had no problems with it. So, what we are actually seeing is that with time, the intensity of the stimulus is being weakened. So, as I mentioned that uh, the longitudinal study with little Albert could not be continued as he was removed and only for a couple of days, he was for the next one month, he could be brought in on a weekly interval. Uh, so, uh, the experiment had to be ended there and uh, the conclusions that Watson and Reiner uh, drew from it were that uh, it a uh, conditioned fear response could be produced on a child and on a human being that is and it could easily be transferred to a rabbit, a dog, a fur coat, cotton wool, Santa Claus mask and also Watson's hair. But there was no transfer to the child's building blocks or the hair of other two observers. So, it was uh, completely dependent on the how the child perceived as um, you know similar to the object that he was initially um, induced fear with. So, um, then uh, the conditional emotional response continued intact for a week after conditioning, then persisted for another 4 weeks, but with a certain loss of intensity. This may have been one of the reasons Watson and Reiner thought was because Albert was a very stolid and calm child. So, probably with other individuals, the response would uh, not lose intensity, the fear response would not lose intensity so quickly. And Watson and Reiner, as I mentioned earlier, showed that fear could be conditioned. And this is the way later on it was seen that phobias are created and phobias are either true conditioned emotional responses or they are directly or transferred to uh, you know to different objects. And um, they showed, so this study basically showed that um, uh, emotions are actually learned. So, uh, basically you condition it with some other neutral response, neutral stimulus and that is how you create an emotional response of say fear or love and with time these become more complex and uh, this uh, gradually that is how uh, this we would uh, that would answer for how the emotions are created. And as the child grows up, with the increasing complexity of behaviors, the, uh, the other conditioned emotional responses become added and combined with it. And he says that all our emotions, all our behaviors are learnt. This is a quantitative view towards uh, you know human uh, psychology as compared to 
the qualitative view that was uh, given by Freud and Piaget and where they saw that development was in a series of different stages and phases and there were different kinds of behavior that were related to a particular stage. Watson, the father of behaviorism, saw it in a different way. Watson thought that these were actually whatever we are learning with time are basically conditioned responses. And that is, so all our uh, behaviors or all our expressions or all our, uh, the, our personality is basically learned behavior. So, as compared to um, uh, Freud and Piaget, Watson's theory spoke about a quantitative view, while theirs was a qualitative one. After, uh, after Watson's research, another research was carried out by Mary Cover Jones in 1924, and primarily it was uh, monitored by uh, Watson. And uh, this was on removing the fear from another child. And this uh, was on little Peter, and little basically little Peter had uh, fear on all the furry animals that, uh, and it seemed that as if he is just another, as uh, Cover Jones explained it, as if it was Albert grown a bit older, and he had a fear of all the other animals, uh, furry animals that uh, was actually induced in Albert, and uh, this child. So basically. Uh, the, uh, Mary Cover Jones showed that fear it could be unlearned with the presentation of the feared object with a pleasant stimuli. So, earlier the um, uh, neutral object or uh, in this case the rat, the rabbit and the Santa Claus mask all these later on they uh, it was transferred to the Santa Claus mask, but initially the neutral object the rat was paired with a feared stimulus and to uncondition a fear. So, the stimulus had to be present, uh, in a new, uh, the stimulus had to be present with a pleasant stimuli. So, basically the feared object in this case the rat had to be produced with a pleasant stimuli. And uh, again Mary Cover Jones showed that this could be done. And she uh, published a paper about the experiment. Uh, stated uh, a laboratory study of fear, the case of Peter, little Peter that is in 1924. And later on it was seen that this study actually led uh, to the way and this, this use actually uh, Woolpe in 1958 showed that this is the way that phobias can be treated with. So, basically the treatment of phobias, specific phobias is done through systematic desensitization and this actually follows the behavior, uh, the, the, the treatment procedure follows the principles of conditioning and unconditioning uh, that was actually uh, introduced by J. B. Watson in 1920. So, this is one of the major, uh, I, feel, I believe that this is one of the major researches in psychology, which shows that how learning principles can be applied in clinical psychology. And um, this uh, till date, we uh, talk about systematic desensitization when you are trying to treat, teach, uh, treat uh, specific phobias and is still in use today. Thank you.